Thank you, Min. Hi everyone. Um, our first talk is about um, interfacing an OLAP cube with um, a chatbot written with React. So let me first introduce myself. Uh, I'm Nida. I've been working with um, Active VM company for the past 12 years. Um, I'm coding mostly in Java and JavaScript. Used to be coding in Perl, C, C++. A few years ago. Um, I'm in Singapore for the past eight, eight years and I will be co-presenting with uh, Lisa. Hi, guys, I'm Lisa Martini. Uh, I'm also a software engineer in ActiveVM. Um, I joined Singapore one year ago and I love it. Uh, it's really nice. Um, uh, I just graduated last year from a, a French engineering school. And uh, mostly I'm full stack, but uh, I really like uh, front end technologies. Uh, so, yeah, mostly done for me. Uh, Nida is going to explain you the rest. Okay. So, before Lisa introduces uh, the amazing chatbot, so let me give you a bit of context. Um, so, what you're going to see is a prototype that uh, Lisa built that has been integrated uh, in our product suite. Our product suite is made uh, with a, there is a back end, named Active Pivot, which is an OLAP in memory database. I will introduce OLAP later on. This is written in Java. The front end is named Active UI. This is the one you, want, you, you, are, you will see in action. This one is written in JavaScript with React. So some of you who are as old as me, when they hear OLAP, they will tell like, oh, what the hell, like OLAP sounds like 90, 1990s. Um, and the company age is almost 13 years old. So when we started um, building our product, we tried to build the next generation multidimensional database. Uh, Active Pivot, the, the back end, the server is not only an OLAP, but it is also an OLTP which means you can query this multi-dimensional database and you can at the same time add transaction which is almost impossible in all the old OLAP technologies and even the current ones where you need to destroy this database and to rebuild it again when you have new data. In our case we are incremental and you can keep adding data into the engine. So it's an aggregation engine that allows you to browse your data. You feel you, you feed the, this multidimensional database with a lot of data, and then you can build your own reports. You can start browsing the data. This runs in memory, in the memory in the RAM of the server. I won't give more detail on the topic. If you want to know more, just catch me. Let's give you an idea what OLAP is. Usually when we mention OLAP, we usually say OLAP Q. So, to introduce the concept, usually we use something like this Rubik's Cube, where we tell you, okay, there are three dimensions, three analysis dimension here. One is called product, one is called time, and one special one that holds the measures. The measures are those um, metrics, those values that you will see, look at, and make decision while looking at them based on your business and your use case. And usually when you are in the OLAP world, we always speak about like slicing and dicing. So in this case, if I want to check what the, the profit made with alcoholic beverages for February, I will definitely look for that uh, light blue dice. So OLAP is no more than in this uh, multi-dimensional structure looking for the dices I need to build my report. And the query language for the OLAP structure is called MDX, multidimensional expressions. You will see some of it later on. It looks like SQL because you have select where from, but this is the only thing they have in common. It's really misleading, so do not 
if you want to learn this language, which is kind of standard implemented by many players, started by Microsoft, documentation is on, the, on their MSDN, but do, do not try to compare, to, to compare it with SQL. So Excel, um, Tableau, and many other tools support this language, are able to query our back end, and we of course have our, we implemented our own front end that queries this back end implementing MDX. The data model we're gonna use today is quite simple. So I have employees, those are my salesmen, they're doing some orders for some customers and every order is related to a product. It's as simple as that. The um, database we're gonna query ha has been already fed with the data. So you will see only the results. We will fire queries and you will see the results. So it will be in this context. Just for you to see how it looks like. Oh, wait a minute. You have to show it on the... Uh, sorry. Yep. Sorry. Oh, yes. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Would be better. Okay. Oh, come on. Oh, slide it again. Sorry. Okay, now come there? on. <laughs> yep. Yeah, thank you. We're good. Okay. So I'll pick up something that we call pivot table, similar to the pivot table you see in Excel. This one runs within a browser. So here you have the data model that I was mentioning earlier. So all the data is loaded in the back end. There is like no canned reports here. There are no canned reports. So say I want to check my margin, my revenues, per products. <coughs> so you keep doing like a drag and drop, and of course, those are the dices you're looking at. If you wanna do a breakdown, you can see by, by product, you can see directly the, this. Um, like every time you, you try, every time you press, um, like you expand, you collapse, you will see here on the right, you will see the MDX changing. So most, most of the time the MDX is generated by the front end that are interacting with the back end tools, or the back end all up uh, solutions. Even among our clients, most of the, like, there are some proficient business analysts who are writing MDX, but most of the clients, they build their report by browsing the data. Okay, I want to see uh, my products, my, my revenues by products. I want to add this by uh, this way. I want to add salespersons here. So now I have products and salesperson. They're stacked together. I want to stack it the other way. So as you can see, you are free to build. It's a self-service reporting. However, for the aim of the prototype that Lisa did, what we wanted to do, we said, okay, even some maybe one day we'll have the issue where some end users, they don't even want to play with the pivot table. Let's find another nice way, a funny way, that will bridge the gap and that will take some normal sentences and send them to the back end. So, of course, Lisa will introduce you the architecture and will give you a demo. Lisa? Thank you. I think it's fine. Um, so, yeah. So, now I'm going to present you uh, the chatbot. Just before that, I'm going to explain you a little bit the, the flow. Come back. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yes. Yeah, good. Okay. So the first thing is the user is going to ask a question to the, um, to the active UI, so to the browser, to the chatbot, who's going to send, um, sorry, it's quite loud, who's going to send um, the request to an external NLP service, so natural language processing, that I'm going to introduce you just later on. And then I'm going to receive an entities object. Uh, and from that, I'm going to build AMDX queries uh, to send it to the active pivot uh, to our server, get the response, and display something. So either a simple 
a sentence or pivot table, as Nita showed, or even chart or whatever. So let's go for this. Okay. So we good. No, it should be fine. Oh, no, it should be good. Up here. What happened? Up here. It's gonna load. Yep. Are we good? I hope I will have this sound. And let's start to interact with the chatbot. How are you? Okay, yeah, sorry. I think that's fine. I'm going to shut the turn off the, the sound at the end. It's going to be annoying. <laughs> Thank you anyway. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's try something else. <laughs> No. <laughs> uh, what were the revenues yesterday? Okay. Let's try that way. All right. <laughs> what were the revenues yesterday? Okay, great. Again? I think, yeah. What were the revenues yesterday? We could. Nice. Worked. <laughs> that was nice. So for that, I just ask a simple question about the revenue yesterday. I can also ask something like, maybe I don't know what to ask. So I'm just going to say, I can do it. Help. Help. Oh, yeah. Help. And we're good. OK, so I'm just going to shut down the sound. It's going to be kind of annoying at some point. And I can go here on the simple request. And maybe I can ask like uh, the purchases for Bedford on the 1st of Jan of this year. And that's something. And it works also. So that's something pretty simple also has a question, but that works. Um, so I think you understand the concept, understand that I can say something. I'm going to write it down now because it's going to be complex. So now, let's say I want to ask something just a little bit more complex. So with more uh, measures, more dimensions, uh, you're going to see. So let's try what are the revenues margin and purchases for Cheng, the beer, which is a product, uh, condiments, condiments, and confections, which are product category, uh, four days ago. Oh, sorry. Up here. And here you have the same pivot table. Just gonna resize this part. Okay, and here you have um, the product chain, which is in the category beverage, the two categories, condiments and confection, and you have the revenue, the margin, and the purchase. So just to remind you, this kind of data are not pre-computed. It's like it's aggregated data that it's um, computed on demand. So just a, a few reminder of what's happening here. Um, Come back here. Um, so earlier on, you, you were demonstrating that you could build this multi-dimensional thing, yeah. right? So when you send it the commands, are you just executing a predefined multi-dimension thing, or like are you actually telling it to construct a model on the fly? I'm constructing the model on the fly. Actually, it depends what. Yeah. It depends what you mean exactly by model, uh, constructing yeah. the model on the fly. The structure of the cube will, will not change. Yeah. However, uh, when you fire a query, query, you pick up the dices right. 
that are related to your query. Sometimes you want to get all the dice related to a certain category of product or a product name. You yeah. ca this, is, this is what you do. S see it that way. You have a multi-dimensional struct uh, structure sitting somewhere and you fire the query you want. You, you fire the query. So, so yeah, in, so in a sense, you're... Uh, now where you drag and drop the things, like that's happening on the fly with the chat. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So instead of yeah, exactly. Instead of dragging and dropping and then expanding to look at Chang beer, what I do is directly having yeah. that done through so the chatbot. Chat the chatbot is basically doing my job. Yeah, exactly. So just a reminder. So uh, I send the normal request, the sentence to the NLP service is gonna tag uh, and give me all the words I want. I build the queries on the fly from the the sentence send it to my server and it's sending me the result and I can display the pivot table. So, coming back, so the same way as Nida works with it, I can, for example, drill in, so I want to have more insight on the products from each category. Here, and here we have all the categories who expand it with all the products uh, in it. And from there, I can do, like I can remove a, remove a measure. So now I only have revenue or, the me or margin. I can select a new product, maybe in beverages. Uh, no, maybe not everything. So check with it and maybe hyper coffee. And here it is. So I can basically do the same thing I, that Nita was doing and much more that he hasn't presented. Uh, I can do it directly from the chatbot, and the chatbot is also going to help me do this kind of thing. So for now, I can do a drill out for all, so it's like it's going to shrink all the categories to just uh, show me uh, up here, to show me uh, the result. So let's say now I've finished the analysis on this pivot table. Good. Now I'm going to go back and help, because I don't know exactly what question I want to ask. And here I can select for multiple measures. I have few different weights. So mainly the differences are about the date, how I can uh, ask for the day, so four days ago, uh, in between, etc. So I'm gonna try this one. So the margin on mozzarella, Italian cheese, um, for between two dates. So here we, ha we have three dates here. And from here you can see a master. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to do simulation about the purchasing price of the mozzarella. And I'm going to say, okay, let's, let's see what's happening on my margin. What are the impacts if I'm changing the price on the fly um, of um, the purchasing price of the mozzarella? So up here, I can do create a new what if. So we called it a what if or a branch, okay? So I'm going to say mozzarella, we good. And let's say, so I know the current price, because I know it's my data, I know the current price is $18.77. So I'm going to say maybe the purchasing price is going to increase until $19. And let's check the impact on my margin. And here we are, sorry about it, just showing more. And here we have for the margin and the purchasing up here. So we can see that the purchasing price has slightly uh, increased and my margin has decreased for these days for mozzarella. I can also do um, Another what if you yeah, can uh, just one remark this. related to this uh, what if um, the, um, this is possible only because of the back end allows you to add extra data everything is held in the memory you can add you can remove the data the way you want here with the, this what if what we did is we defined the scenario where I can see side by side if tomorrow the purchase price increase or decrease of one of my uh, of one of the product will be what will be the impact immediately on my current data and I can make a decision right now so the the chatbot is no more than um, a way to reach that functionality mm. in a simple way but the functionality is available thanks also oh, no, to the backend yeah thank you Nida. 
So now I'm going to try another simulation, maybe with a lower price of $16. And same way, you're going to see, so we have now three, three different branch masters. Sorry about it. I cannot show you up here. So you now have two different um, branches. I can show you the name of it. So one for 19 price. Uh, and one for 16, and you can definitely see the, the difference. So what I can do now, it's also delete the last created branch. The branch for us is like this simulation, this what if simulation. And I can also delete one branch with the name. I'm going to copy it. It's going to be easier up here. Bam, bam. And here we are back again, good. So now I'm finishing the analysis on this pivot table. Obviously, I did the what if uh, directly from the pivot table. I can also do it uh, directly asking a, a new price of something uh, to the chatbot. So I'm going to say, hey, what if um, the price of Chang, again, the purchasing price of Chang uh, is up three uh, dollars. And here the same thing. I'm going to have up the chain, the master branch, the new branch, the, the other simulation, and the impact on the purchases and margin. So I think you understand the, the, this concept very clearly. And finally, what I'm going to do is another kind of request that we can do through our chatbot. Let's try again some voice. Maybe it's going to work. Okay. Give me the top five products with highest margin. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the top five product with highest margin. And here we are, There's a good chart uh, showing the top five product, Cote de Blay, which is a, a wine, right? <laughs> Tartre Sucre and everything, and the margin. So I can also ask uh, something uh, different, like give me all employee or some salesperson contributing to 60%. Oh, sorry. 60% of my revenues, let's say. Uh, the past two days, sorry. The past two days. Let's try that. Just to show you the difference. And here you can see all the employees, quite small because the, of the layout of the, the pages. So you can see for two different dates, actually, you cannot. Uh, here, so you can see for two different dates um, the breakdown of employees contributing to 60% of my revenues. Now, just a last question, just for the fun. <laughs> Maybe an announcement. <laughs> so, just for the fun to see that it exists. I can also go there and ask for, for example, this one. So give me the two best region uh, in terms of revenue for each country. And bam, you have a good chart with the colors and everything. So these kind of charts are from our core, but the chatbot is just here to display it. So I'm done with the demo of the chatbot, and now I'm going to talk a little bit about the stack and uh, what I used. Um, so I use simply a React Simple Chatbot, which is a React open source React component uh, made by Luca Bassetti. It's pretty straightforward, as you can see on the GIF. Uh, it's something I can show you also later on uh, on this web page. So basically, it's the conversational flow is done through a step uh, object, a JS object, which I show you on the 
on the right side, um, where you define the, the step you want to do, what you're going to do. So it can be a message, it can be a user um, input, or it can be a custom step, what I mainly used for my purpose. Uh, and then you explain what you're going to trigger in the, the step afterward. You can customize uh, the chatbot pretty easily for the icons, the colors, and everything. And as is, you can see, uh, there is a speech recognition and speech synthesis that are already embedded in. It's not perfect, but it works as you, as you saw. So I also use natural language processing. So NLP is a branch of artificial intelligence that deals with the computers and the humans. And the, the goal is to uh, read, understand, and make sense of the human language. So what I use is weed.ai, which is help you to extract relevant information. So you can categorize the user intent, you can tag words, uh, you can use built-in entities such as like uh, the date, uh, the age of people, or whatever, a lot of built-in entities. Um, you can define some roles and you can, uh, you have different lookup strategy. I can also answer a question about that later on. In terms of integration, it's quite straightforward. So you have a Node.js integration, Python, Ruby, uh, HTTP API, or even Facebook Messenger. So you can check on this uh, link if you want to see. So what it's going to look like. So WTI web app looks like this. So as you can see, the scroll is all the entities I tagged. And how it works, you launch a sentence, um, and you are going to basically tag all the words you want. And then if it's a keyword uh, strategy, what I use, you can define all the keywords that it are going to be in these entities. So it's quite nice. You have logs also, so it can help you to see what, uh, what went wrong or not, what went good. So yeah, basically this. And what is a little bit of code for those who like it. Uh, just the way we um, integrate uh, this uh, with AI connection, uh, I use the HTTP, HTTP API, so it's just a simple XML HTTP, uh, sorry, HTTP request. Um, and once I receive the full answer, I can actually process the entities object I received. So for me, it's like check and run MDX. Uh, so a bit of feedback on, um, on what I did for this project. So with AI, it's pretty simple. Easy to use, fast integration, fast training. Um, I had a good result super fast. Uh, there are many built-in entities supported by Duckling. So WTI is a Facebook company, so good support. Uh, the only downside are if you have specific use case, it's going to be quite long to tag everything from the web app. Uh, and there is less reliability on your own custom entities, which is quite of normal. For the React component, um, same thing, fast integration, good results, super fast, uh, customization, speech recognition, I already mentioned that. The only downside was it's really hard to keep a state uh, between the steps, uh, unless you have Redux or something, uh, something ab above, above the component. And uh, finally, who we are, Activium. Uh, we've been here uh, for more than 13 years. We are more than 120 uh, worldwide. We have five centers, New York, London, Paris, Hong Kong, and Singapore. Um, and if you have any question about a company, about us, if you're facing any, I don't know, aggregation, challenge, use cases, feel free to contact us or um, our office or in Amoy Street. So we are super close. So yeah, we'll be here. And uh, thank you for your attention, and I'm here for your question. We are here for your question. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, or we were super uh, clear, crystal clear, and you understood everything. Or, or not. <laughs> or not. <laughs> or not. Just, yeah, go ahead, Charles. Um, so w when you're actually. So when you're actually uh, getting all these <laughs> keywords you tagged, are you also looking at some connectors like the what if or words between to understand what the query is? So do I have to say a specific words with the no. names of the columns or how? N no, no. So when you are training with .ai, 
you're gonna send them like a mess, um, um, a sentence and you're only tagging the word you really need. You could actually say what is a question a word and I needed to have the intent. But first, when you start a question, so like um, top five products uh, for revenues. So this here, revenues. Okay. So here, I when I started to train the, um, the Wheat AI, I created the old sentence and then I'm going to say I'm going to create an intent. So the intent is what the user wants to achieve. So for me it was a top count multiple whatever, like it can be whatever you want. Uh, it was a top question. So for, it was really something I was using for the processing of the, the result. And then I train because I use several sentences and say, you know what, after the top there is a number. So I talked in. I say that it's a wheat number, so wheat, if it starts with wheat, it's a built-in entities. So he, he, he found it really quickly. And then I say product is uh, something that I use for, uh, has a dimension, revenues is something that I use as a measure. And because I'm going to do it several times, it's going to understand that the five after the top is something that I want. And then with WTI, you can define some roles. So if you have, let's say, two top five, top ten, you can actually give, a, give them a role or, for example, if you want to have, like, say, three bathroom and two uh, bedrooms, something like that. You want the two and three because you're going to do a processing on this and you're going to explain and, do and uh, create some rules and say, this one with bathroom is going to be related to bathroom number and this one with bedroom is going to be related to bedroom numbers. So you don't have to tag everything. I, it's, uh, it's with, the, um, with all the sentences that you're going to create what you want. Did I answer your question? And just so you know, uh, in terms of time, this was pretty straightforward. So overall, if I removed all the understanding of the product or on product and all the processing and the, dif the, the difficulties I could have faced um, trying to integrate it to our products, I think you can use Wheat AI and uh, React Simple Chatbot really quickly, and it can be like uh, between three to four weeks, you can have a good uh, chatbot that works super easily, super fast. So that's good things. Uh, you can also, um, in Wheat AI, so I use the web app, but what you can do also, if, if you have uh, use cases, there is an API for the Wheat AI, so you can actually, um, use an API and fit it with a, with, a, with a file, like you define in a file like a, a CSV, you can define like this, pro, this word is going to be um, this kind of entity, so entity 1, and this word is going to be entity 2, and you're going to send it to the Wheat AI through the API and it's going to be just done the same way, just a different way to train the app. Here. Hello? Yeah. Hi. So instead of asking what products has the highest revenue, if I ask what item earns the most is is the chat box, is the library that we are using, uh, you are using the Wit AI uh, simple React chat box, are they going to answer this kind of question? The, all the processing and all the question you want a, the chatbot to, to answer, you are going to build it. So if I didn't, I could, I mean, if I had this question, Wheat AI, because I trained it, might actually understand all the word I want, mm -hmm. but if I didn't do any processing on my part, mm -hmm. you're not going to see anything. But it, mm -hmm. it's going to work. Like, if you train the app correctly, and if you do the processing of your, of your entities, of your, of your object and of your answer, everything is going to work. Okay. So, I and also in terms of the OL app, OL app, right? Um, the three-dimensional stuff, like how does it work? Like there are time, there are product, and the other dimension, what, what's called that? Yeah, but yeah, can you just talk more about the OL app? Um, <laughs> so uh, you want me to talk more about OL app, right? Uh, yes. Um, for instance, the, um, the, the demo we were playing with, if you can come back to the chatbot, just chatbot to show the side, if you, if you can yeah. drag the data explorer 
And also the local host, the, the first page you showed us, uh, is that the database how it looks like? Um, this one? Is it, is it really the... I don't know. Which so, one? So Which okay, one are so you talking let's about? Start, let, let me answer your first question first. So uh, what, what you see here, okay, all this, if you can expand some of them, yeah, all those, those are called dimensions. In the example I was showing in the PowerPoint, yeah. just for human brain, if you show more than three dimensions, I, I don't even know how to write it down because it's, it's impossible. Okay. Uh, however, here we are in a world with several dimensions. Um, every time you process a record from your data, that record should, I'm talking here about like generic of all that, every record should contribute to all what we call levels. So every record should have a product category, product name, um, uh, date, salesperson, etc., etc. If if you okay, remember what you did in school? You have X, Y, Z, three uh, axes. If you have a point in that space, you need to contribute to every axis. This is how OLAP works. You need to have a coordinate on every axis. So here you you're not even seeing the data we played with. Maybe you can do a drill through in the active. It's, just it's your the, fault, the huh? you're bringing me there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the, the lady showed us, um, <laughs> he, she added a what if column, right? E what if item. So when, when, when she add that item, yeah. how does the three dimensions were defined? For there the are item? more than three dimensions. Okay. So Maybe what I showed on the PowerPoint, back? that was okay. just um, um, to introduce the concept. Here we moved far from there. Yeah, we have there like something uh, that looks more the, the, the reality. So, um, when you add, when you add um, a what if scenario, you do exactly the same thing. You need, to, um, you need to bring the same type of data. I don't, okay, I don't want to dive there. Um, you, you take the original data mm -hmm. and uh, you have, uh, you move a pointer only with the changing data. So we change only the price. We don't duplicate the data. We know that we changed only the price. So you still have the same universe of data. You still have the same attributes that contribute to, to each of axis. Sorry, it looks a bit mm -hmm. strange, but you, like, usually when I train people on OLAP, I spend like you know, four or five days <laughs> to train the whole thing. So I cannot, I have short window <laughs> to, to introduce that, but see it that way. And anything, okay, if you want to understand the OLAP in, in a quick way, if I give you a table and I tell you, give me all the aggregates, give me um, like, uh, yeah, the sum of, a, of an amount by product, what will you do? You will do group by. So OLAP does group by by everything. Every level you see here, every, yeah. every level, every axis does a group by. This is what the database is doing behind the scenes. So it's not a relational database, it's a multi-dimensional database. Every group by is already materialized. This is why when you come and you query, you're super fast. And especially if you are in memory, you are faster than others. Okay. Hope that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Any, other, any other question? And the, the first page. Um, uh, you mentioned local the host table. there? Yes, th th this page. Because everything is running on, on, on the laptop there? That's it? Um, 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 yeah. So. Mm. What do you want me to show? I don't, I don't know. know. Like, what, what's, what, the what's question like actually? a. Um. Okay, there is. Okay, if you come back to the slides. Mm. Th there is a front end, the presentation layer, which is. Or maybe you show the Dev Console, the Chrome Dev, oh, okay. Dev Tools. Is it uh, the, the product is, is there for uh, the past 10 years. Uh, most of like big financial institutions are using it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the, the product is, is there. Like um, The database is there for the past 10 years plus. Uh, the UI is there as well. Only this um, chatbot work is our prototype. This is experimental. But yeah. the product is... Uh, if you want to buy it, please say hi and come. Let's discuss. <laughs> okay. If you have any any issue related to aggregation, we'll be happy to sell you that. I'm not the salesman, but I will send you our 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 MD. <laughs> However, uh, if you see here localhost, because we're running everything locally, the back end plus the front end. So this is the only reason why you see localhost. We have time for one more good question.
imagine you would uh, take this product to your customers. Would you sit down with them and train the NLP with them, or would you teach them how to train the uh, the Wit AI themselves, um, or would you listen to their queries and then you train Wit AI for them? With this product, I mean, what what is your real purpose like do you want to integrate a chatbot for you for your own project or if i have um the chatbot in our solutions what are exact what is exactly your question uh i'm just wondering how to work with new customers who want to make uh new questions for the bot how would you arrange the training uh, of wit ai would you do it yourself or would they do it would they talk to wit AI? since it's a prototype uh Right now we can do anything, but I think the easiest part would be for us to, uh, we, we have a kind of a system to know what the user wants, a uh, ticket system. So with this, they could say, hey, you know what, uh, they're missing like some uh, question, I have this question, I would like to, to ask for the chatbot, and we can take care of it. Okay. But since, uh, be, as, as yeah. Lisa mentioned, that you can train with AI remotely by submitting, mm -hmm. um, maybe you have like a, a big CSV file, so then potentially you might build kind of interface so that they can drop the new questions and mm. then send it to the back end to keep training. Yeah. Or you train on daily basis. Or maybe you have the all the errors, you you know, get your logs and you see what, what's wrong and you keep training yeah. till till you reach um, like a level. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can get the logs and say these people ask this kind of question and that hasn't been answered yet. Yeah. So we can use it to build a new question, train the, the model. But actually, it's not actually the, 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 the most difficult part. It's not training the WIT AI. It's more the processing of creating the MDX from our side, using our library, creating the MDX from the, from the, the sentence. Because actually, from WIT AI, I'm just receiving some words. I'm receiving a JSON object I can show you here. So for this one, I don't know if you see here, this object is what I received from WTI, and I'm going to receive like just a s normal object with dimension. There are two objects in it. So this one is a region. This one is a country. I also receive uh, a measure. But you see, I just received words. So I n even with this, I need to extract these words and create my, my whole MDX, which is going to look like this at the end. Quite not funny to see right th oh, like this. Oh, maybe I can. Yep, here. So yeah, so at the end, from this object, from this object, uh, where I received only words, I'm going to create this whole thing. Thank you. OK, uh, uh, is it a quick one? Because we don't want to take too much time for the next one. Hello. Uh, you mentioned earlier that the uh, server is runs on Java. And what's the role of the Java here? Or it looks like you can push everything to the data. So the data itself is running in Java. I didn't hear the question. I don't know if you, yeah, OK, OK. So um, yeah, the server is, in, is running and written in Java and is doing all the heavy lifting for you. The UI remains only the, um, the presentation layer. Even if in this case, the case of the chatbot, the UI is the one talking to VTI, getting the words, and then doing some logic to bridge the sentence you're writing, the result coming from with AI, with MDX. However, the heavy lifting is coming from the server side. Uh, I didn't want to spend too much time talking about that, but the server side runs in memory. Can you know we, we, we run on servers of like four terabyte of RAM. This is something that you can easily get even on, on AWS or equivalent. Um, so you, you can you can have a huge server that is leveraging all your uh, um, cores to provide the query as fast as possible. We are, we try to remain being in memory, we try to remain in the world of uh, second seconds. So yeah. you, you send your query, you receive the result. There is no heavy lifting do done on the, um, on the UI. So yeah, the Java, the Java side is doing most of the job. 
and is interpreting the MDX, getting the dices, answering you. So this is what we literally do. So every query goes to the server, hits the server, comes back. Of course, in this use case, the server, this is why you see the local host, the server is running locally, the UI is deployed locally, but the with AI is deployed somewhere, I don't know uh, where. Yeah, in the cloud. Yeah. So this is how this prototype is made, if you're wondering where things are. But, but things uh, could have been done differently. Like I could just get the sentence, send it to the server, and then the server could have asked for WTI mm -hmm. and do some more check than, I'm, than what I'm doing. And then, I mean, uh, it's just a choice. And it was easier to do it uh, on the front end part. And the goal, again, the goal of this prototype is uh, uh, we wanted to see how complex it is to do a chatbot. We never, yeah. we're not coming from that world. We're more, more from the analytics world. Um, kind of, let's say, big data slash BI. We wanted to see how can we do our own because, like, uh, chatbot and AI and all that stuff is part of the you know, high port. You, you you listen a lot, but we wanted to do something ourselves to see how can we make it work end to end. And by what Lisa expe uh, showed, you can do the same with a SQL database if you want. Huh? You have a, you can bridge. You can take v with AI. You <coughs> have the the the. the Sorry. The component, and then you can, you know, you can do the same thing by, you know, translating everything in SQL if you want to. Uh, thank you very much for the talk today. Thank you. Thank you.